Okay, so let us then uh, go to the next uh, topic. Questions? So notice that what we have been assuming so far is this. That's what we have been assuming. If we are assuming this goes like this, and if beta is less than 1, then it will fall more sharply. And if beta is greater than 1, you can actually have a peak in there. And this is what we have been assuming. And if you have an increasing failure rate, you can use this for a declining failure rate. So if you have, um, if your uh, failure rate is dominated by uh, the burn-in period, where uh, things get more reliable with passage of time, you could use this. Or if your uh, data is dominated by the, what do we call this, wear out period, where devices are aging, you could apply this. Section, the second equation. This one? Yeah, that has an FT on the right side as well. Is that? Uh, let's see. So let's double. Oh, I, I seem to have uh, some. I seem to have put something that that, that, that doesn't belong there, right? Uh, oops, sorry about that. That doesn't, doesn't make sense. It should be like this. Sorry about that. Okay. So, so is it just that if we are equal to one, it becomes exponential? Yes. Uh, okay. So question is, if beta is equal to one, does it become exponential? And uh, if beta is equal to one, yes, that's true. And you will notice that when beta is equal to one, here this term will drop off. And so lambda is equal to beta by eta. And uh, Any other uh, questions? Uh, okay, let me double check and make sure I have this uh, in this correctly. Uh, yeah, I guess that's yeah, that seems to be right. So let us then uh, go to um, the next topic, which is random testing. Now, random testing is uh, very uh, common in both software and hardware. Okay, how many of you have heard about random testing? I guess you're all electrical engineers, so you may not have come across random testing that often, but it is used in uh, hardware testing. So as I was mentioning, uh, when you use BIST, built-in self-test, in built-in self-test they use an approximation of random testing, which is, uh, they call it a pseudo-random testing. So pseudo-random means it is almost as good as a real random testing. Real randomness is very hard to achieve. And it actually takes a lot of work to uh, make any kind of testing truly random. So it's basically the problem of uh, generating random vectors or the problem of generating random numbers, uh, which is uh, actually a, a separate uh, uh, field by itself. But there are uh, reasons why uh, random testing is attractive. One uh, reason is that if you are doing random testing, you don't have to uh, spend any effort for generating test vectors. You can just generate them randomly. And of course, you need to know what is the correct output. So you just keep on applying random uh, inputs to a unit and keep observing the output. And if output is different from what you uh, expect, then uh, the unit under test is bad. Now there is a question of um, 
how do you know if um, the output that you are looking at is supposed to be correct? Let me have a diagram here. So you have a random pattern generator. Now one possibility is that you compare your unit under test. UUT is unit under test. And here we are assuming this is hardware, but it, it could be software. And here you have something that you call a gold unit that you know is good. And then you compare the responses. So here you have a comparator. And the comparator decides whether uh, the unit under test is good or not. Question is, how are you going to get the gold unit that you know is always good? Now sometimes a gold unit is, uh, you just hope that it is good. So in, if there's a disagreement, then you will know that they disagree, and then you maybe try to find out why they're disagreeing. Uh, one uh, way you can, one common way would be that uh, instead of gold unit, you could obtain expected response using simulation. And actually for hardware that's a good solution. You simulate your uh, unit under test, store the responses somewhere, and basically you apply, so this could be coming from some stored uh, responses. And uh, for software, it, is, it, 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 it could be a challenge. For software, they, there is an idea of uh, some people use, they call it back-to-back -back testing. They uh, put two pieces of software and then test them against each other. And if they disagree that, you know, that there's error in one of them, but then you have to go in and find out where is the error. Uh, sometimes it could be maybe this is the older version of your software which has been thoroughly debugged. And here is a newer and more efficient version of the software. And you want to make sure that it matches with your more trusted existing software. You could do that. Okay, now let me mention about uh, pseudo-random testing. Now, in truth, there is no such thing as uh, random testing. It is always an approximation to random testing. Now, there is something called pseudo-random. about uh, pseudorandom, it is uh, reproducible. If your testing is truly random, it cannot be reproduced. Because every time you try it, it will come up with a different set of inputs. Whereas the pseudorandom, it uses some kind of algorithm to generate the pseudorandom responses, so it is reproducible, which is probably good, because you can repeat your experiments and somebody else could repeat the experiment that you have done and confirm or find out that you have made a mistake. And generally, will not repeat. Until all combinations are applied.
So um, the combinations with uh, with a truly random testing, basically you are you keep picking your uh, tests randomly, and there's a small but finite probability that you may choose the same test again because it's truly random. Whereas in uh, pseudo-random schemes, uh, they are uh, constructed in a way so that the same test is not going to be repeated, which is actually good. And uh, generation, how do you generate pseudo-random sequences? Uh, it could be uh, 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 usually just in time. Okay, have you ever across that term? Have you come across that term just in time? So that's a, a, a uh, that's a term that we hear uh, after uh, after the Japanese they uh, become successful in with their uh, manufacturing process. So basically, they arrange everything so that uh, anything that they need from their assembly line arrives just in time. So this careful arrangement that uh, if something is needed, it's generated uh, just at that time. So that's the idea that uh, they are usually generated just in time. That means uh, that uh, conti continuously. So there are, uh, there's an approach called autonomous linear feedback uh, shift register. This is the version that is typically used in the best in hardware. Uh, autonomous linear feedback shift register. And then there are other possibilities. Incidentally, we have a, uh, we uh, uh, came up with a scheme that we call anti-random scheme. And uh, uh, with anti-random scheme, uh, it is specifically designed to be uh, not random. And with anti-random scheme, uh, you uh, try to find an input which is as different as possible from all the inputs that you've applied before. So we gave that idea anti-random testing. And we have done some work on that. So we have applied it to hardware and software. And we found that it has some uh, uh, very uh, good properties in terms of efficiency. But we never f could figure out a, uh, we have a scheme to generate anti-random sequences, but we could never uh, figure out, in spite of several tries, a, an elegant uh, method for generating anti-random sequences. Perhaps I will talk about that uh, uh, sometime. Pseudo-random testing will uh, satisfy some uh, randomness properties. But not all. Now there are some uh, randomness properties that have been defined in the literature. As I was men mentioning, random number generation is a very important problem. It is used in many situations, including in cryptography. And uh, so that people have uh, come up with tests for evaluating randomness. And for example, if you are generating a binary sequence, one test of randomness could be you should have the same number of ones and zeros. Because if you have more ones or if you have more zeros, then obviously there's something that is not random there. And, there, and then there are other tests for randomness. OK. Now let us come to uh, one question. If you apply some randomly generated tests, you, if you have applied a bunch of tests, you have spent some time testing, at the end, what can you say about uh, what you have achieved?